Um, there's two speakers. I'll be presenting to you the first part of our talk, and Davy will present the next one. We've titled our talk a Funumentary with one big reason. We want you to have fun uh, in the next coming half an hour. So we're going to present, we're going to speak a little bit, going to present a little movie, speak a little bit, then present a little movie. So let's go. Um, Davy and I, we work at Cinematheque. Some of you know, some of you don't. Cinematheque is um, the Belgian Royal Movie Archive, actually. It contains movies that are more than 100 years old, from the first Lumiere movies from 1890 up until a movie that was made yesterday, in manner of speaking. So I will talk to you about the present of uh, what we're doing there and the technical stuff we're doing there. And Davy will talk about the future, which is very interesting. First of all, I'm the technical guy, Davy is more the political guy. Um, who are we? Who am I, maybe? So, here we go. So that's what we do. Actually, we started working internally there, so actually we're part of, of becoming part of Cinematech. But first and foremost, um, I don't know who of you, a little poll questionnaire maybe, who of you do, uh, do know the Cinematech? So let's say 50-50. Um, for the other half, I don't know if you have an idea of what a, a film archive looks like or what is it, what it contains. I brought you a little sample to entertain you again. Oh. Here we go. So it's old movies, but it's also new movies. It's movies that all together consist of three petabytes of data, which is a lot. And I'm not speaking about the, uh, the analog stuff, this is only the digitized stuff. So we're talking about a lot of movies. Um, now, if we're talking about a film archive, what does it look like from the inside? So you probably think, for those of you who've never been there, that it more or less looks a bit like this, which is normal, of course, of course. But for those of you who have been there, actually it looks more a little bit like this. So just to say that movie in the year 2018 is not analog anymore for starters, is not um, a small file anymore, it's becoming bigger and bigger, even scan resolutions are becoming bigger and bigger. So we do, Cinematheque do contains films that date back to 1890, um, but we're in 2018, which brings us to the question, okay, we've been around for let's say 100 years, how do we go forward, how do we jump into the future, and how do we go to 2100? Actually, this is the, the main question that the people at Cinematech said, okay, um, we want both to innovate, but also to let the archive grow, 
um, not only by digitizing the stuff that is on analog and in, inside the archive, but also the digitized stuff that comes in, what do we do with it? So we said to them, we're going to link your data. This is <coughs> actually the major topic of this talk about linked data. Um, and more or less what it means to link your data when it comes to uh, linking it in a film archive. First of all, what does the software look like that we've been using for the last 100 years? You all know it. It looks, actually, it is a screenshot of this software, but it could have been access, it could have been an Excel sheet that's a little bit pimped, whatever. We call it Fox Pro. It's a Fox Pro is a Microsoft thing from the 90s, uh, and we're still using it today on a Windows 95 machine. So we said, um, Let's say uh, it was the summer of 2015. Uh, yeah, the summer of 2015. Uh, we said, okay, we're going to start preparing for the future. We're going to rewrite the software from scratch uh, and we're going to link it. So we said, okay, you have tons of data. You have tons of interesting data, even tons of interesting metadata. Uh, what, are, what are we going to do with it? So we drafted a software and I give you a sneak peek uh, of the software that we've written today, which more or less looks like this. So, first thing that we wanted to get rid of is um, the fact that metadata is boring. If you hand metadata to an archivist and you say, okay, it's not only metadata, but you can add videos, and if you have PDFs or images or whatever uh, about this thing you're creating, you should be able to just add it. Like if you have um, a film about the Winter Olympics of 1904, and you really have a reel that's scanned, that's digitized, the Winter Olympics of 1904. You've been working on this for six months. The first thing you want to do if you write your little form about the Winter Olympics and the excellent director that's directing it and so on, you want to be able to add your film to this metadata because this is the real passion. So we created a framework and we baptized it Straudel. And we said, okay, um, this is what we want to do. We not only want to link our data, but we want to mix media and metadata in the same form. Some of you probably think, oh, oh no, another uh, linked data framework. Why are you inventing something new? There's tons of uh, stuff that's al already um, out there. Well, um, Stralo is not really um, a piece of software. It's a philosophy. So it's a philosophy of something called Cinematech and us together and we got creative and we said, okay, let's think like pirates. And when you think like pirates, this happens. Take what you can, give nothing back. <laughs> so we said, okay, we're gonna take what we can and we'll give nothing back. So this is the trail of philosophy. We're a small institute we have major plans where, oh my god, we, one of the aims is to become the best video tech institute in the world. I'm not kidding, this really is one of our goals. But we have no money. So we said, okay, we're going to think like pirates. But first of all, a pirate needs to survive, of course. But a pirate also has to innovate because it lives outside the law and so on. So and the, the, the third goal was to um, become the best video tech institute in the world. This is the cultural, uh, the um, heritage sector. We're not talking about commercial uh, sector because that's a little bit impossible. But we said, okay, we're gonna think like a pirate and we're gonna give back, <coughs> but we're gonna give back later. So we're gonna wait a little bit, we're gonna take, 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 and then when we're ready, we're gonna give you back. So this is, uh, why? We created Stralo from scratch, actually. Um, I heard in another talk today, we want to learn by doing. Actually, this is the main reason behind Stralo, why we started it from scratch. We wanted to learn linked data in a video context by doing. So we said, okay, 
what is linked data? We started studying linked data, we started studying our own archive, we started studying, we're pirates, uh, what other archives had, what we wanted to have, and so on and so on. So this is um, an example, three examples actually, of what we wanted to achieve by using linked data. First of all, when you enter, um, this is a country, when you enter Belgium in a form, there's tons of data you can steal. We're pirates, so there's tons of data we can steal. On the right-hand side, you see a Wikidata um, Sparkle query, or the results of a Wikidata Sparkle query. On the left-hand side, it's a GeoNames uh, map. So there's tons of data. You just need to make a link. If you want to use Belgium, you just need to make a link between what you have and the concept of Belgium in someone else's ontology. And you get all this for free. So this is rule number one how we're stealing other people's data. Rule number two, we have a lot of keywords. Um, so if I have a movie about bullfighting and we want to annotate this movie about, this is about bullfighting, um, we said, okay, we're not gonna enter bullfighting because it doesn't have the translation to French and to Dutch and Russian and so on. Um, we're gonna link to the concept of bullfighting in Wikidata. So we said, okay, on the right-hand side, you see all the translations and all the possible languages that, are, uh, that have translated the term bullfighting on Wikidata. So we get all this for free. And on top, in, by linking bullfighting to our little video, the, all the, the sub-statements and the super-statements and the, the fact that it's an activity, and this is on the San Marco Square and so on, uh, we get all this for free. So this is nice, we're pirates, okay, we're getting there. Last thing is, um, when we're talking about corporations, persons, actors, and so on, we're not going to enter Judy Dench in our um, database. We're going to link to the concept of Judy Dench on Wikidata because oh, we see here she's married to a guy that's name I don't know, and so on and so on. Her name translated even if uh, or transliterated even to other languages. We get all this for free. So these are three theoretical concepts that we wanted to integrate in our little framework. So actually that's what we did. So I'm going to present to you, I'm going to do it live, I made a little video about it. So this is a live version, it's about un monsieur qui a mangé du taureau, the, the film we saw earlier about the guy with the bullhorns. And we're adding a fact to our page, it's the country of production. So the country of production, actually it's not Belgium, it's France. Um, so by just entering France and we're saving the page and we're clicking on our little link, it made this perfect link to, in this case, to the GeoNames concept, the GeoName concept of the Republic of France. And we get all this for free. So all the translations of France and so on, even the coordinates that are probably here uh, at the bottom, the, uh, to Russian and so on, the coordinates of the country, the bounds of the country, you get all this for free. This is like one second of work in the new frame. Second thing is our bullfighting concept, so we're adding a fact. We could have added whatever we wanted, we could have added video or images, whatever. We're saying, okay, this fact is about its keyword, we're going to enter uh, bullfighting, mistyped even, and with uh, it all the text is. So it says, okay, I found bullfighting on Wikidata, is this you want to use? Yes, this is what, what we want to use. So we have a keyword now, we made a link to Wikidata about bullfighting. If we click through to the wiki data sheet, this is what we get. We get all this for free. So, okay, we're there. We're three years later and we said, okay, we've done quite all right for pirates, right? So, um, before we give back, you should always give back more than what you got, we thought. So, we didn't stop. We created this as well. So we said, okay, as pirates, we have a code, of course, so we're going to give back more than what we got. We got all this data for free, but we're going to open source our code, and we're going to uh, add all of this functionality 
that annotates the movies in real time and tries to detect using machine learning all the things it sees in the movie. And on top of that, we're going to integrate the concept of not only saying this is a bench, which is wrong, this is a cell phone and a person. No, we're going to link this to the link data concepts. So if we want to know ah, a cell phone, actually it's a regular phone, but without a cord and it uses uh, radio frequencies and so on. So we get all this for free again. Second thing we wrote is an OCR engine that's integrated into the uh, statistical engine of Stralo that detects all the subtitles, that detects all the directors, all the and so on and so on, and names in uh, each and every frame or every few frames, and we get that back, uh, we link it back um, into our Stralo database. So we said, okay, as good pirates with good code, we're going to give back later. This is more or less the time we did it uh, last fall, uh, November 2017. We said, okay, we're going to create a, a website, stralo.com. On the, the first uh, goal of the website was to make all code open source, which is actually a checkbox here, but uh, it doesn't render. Then we said, okay, Cinematec is parsing all their uh, data sets of the old Fox Pro stuff into the new Stralo code, and we're going to release this data set. Actually, that's what Dave is going to talk about. And then every data set needs an ontology. We're going to release this ontology, and on top of it, we're going to link it to other European ontologies in Europe. So this is the project website. All code is open source, uh, and it's quite easy if you have a little bit technical knowledge to put it up yourself. Dave, we'll continue. Um. It might be strange that I'm going to present a future <laughs> after this presentation, but and also just to clarify, I'm not a political guy, so I'm <laughs> dealing with politicians, I'm more looking at how can we take that philosophy and translate that into uh, something that our film archive can use, but how can we like exponentially let that grow within um, our network of, of European uh, film archives as well. Second thing, I'm not an Apple head, so this might go wrong, so I need, might need help, <laughs> just to uh, let you know that. So <clears throat> what we were doing, and where we uh, saw ourselves, and, and we started thinking about all this, and as a, uh, what we feel a modern archive needs to do, is because we have all this cultural heritage, these films, this data, and these photographs, these film posters, we have all that. And we wanted to see how can we open up that um, to the actual, what we consider owners of that content, which is the Belgian public. So for instance, this film archive is very much your film archive, if you're from Belgium, if you're not from Belgium, I'm sorry, you have to go to your own <laughs> national film archive. But So how can we give them access, because we've digitized a lot of films, but we've never really been able to give access to these films. How, um, mm -hmm. within copyright laws, and I'm not going to talk about that today, but that's another talk, um, but how can we give access, and how can we also um, provide more information about your own history? How can we provide and contextualize all this information that we have in these films that we have? So then we decided, what do we need to do to become this, philosophy that we had, um, that, that Bram talked about, how can we become a really good modern film archive. So we need to do and we need to reach certain goals, and these are the goals. We need to provide access to our data, data sets, we need to open them up. We need to provide access to our public domain content, which might be simply, you can just say, just upload everything to YouTube, but we, want to, we wanted to make sure that, and we're also doing that, that we can do it through different channels and, and as much channels as possible. And we wanted to um, incorporate very much a sort of playground for innovative ideas, because we, we there were like 20, 25 people working at this archive, and we have a very, I mean, we have clear ideas of what we want, but we need more input, this is clear. I mean, other people have other ideas, we're very open to that. And, of course, play to your strengths. We are a film archive, we will never be a, a digital uh, company like uh, Brahms is, but so we, we need to look at that. And then, as I said, how can we bring this to other film archives? How can we have a network that grows um, exponentially? One of the things that we're doing is, um, because we're a federal archive, and as you might know in Belgium, federalized, <laughs> the federal institutions, it's always a little bit complicated. 
um, especially if you're talking about finding funds and finding money to build on this. So what we normally also do, and also because we are very much embedded in this European uh, association of film archives and, and global, the FIAF uh, film archive funds, we also, also very much look to European uh, projects and, and setting those up together with other countries. And one of our uh, projects that we did where we felt like we need a couple of things. We need more information about things, and we also need uh, better um, data sets. We need better qualitative data sets, meaning we need to clean up our data sets that we have, but we also need to um, uh, link them, and we need to create as much new uh, information and new data that we can uh, in a, a shortest uh, amount of space. And what we found is that we, we wanted to create a platform, which is what we do, we're we doing with iMedia Cities now. It's not ready yet, so don't go searching for it. But you can find a website. But you can't really uh, find a, the platform yet. Um, give us a year. So what we're doing is we're creating a sort of digital workspace where researchers, but also the general public, can watch these films, annotate these films, add other information about these films. And not just because normally metadata is linked to an entire film right now, but to shots. We automatically segment our films into shots, and we automatically add information, metadata, to these shots. So if we ever need to find something, then we don't need to go through the entire film yet again and watch the entire film for 20 minutes just to find a two-minute uh, shot. And one of the things that we took from what we were doing is implementing this linked open data. And I'm now adding the open data because we're a European project. And we felt like this openness and opening up this data set could very much help other people and would also help us in the long run linking and, and, and bringing this project further to other stuff. Um, this is where it might go wrong. This is a very short phrase, don't worry. So what we wanted to do is we took all the images that we had, well, almost all of them, uh, films from 1890 till 1960s, 70s, somewhere, of nine European cities, and we're connecting them. And we're allowing researchers to work on those images. And we're automatically transcoding, um, transcoding them as well, but annotating them, and then letting people, other people add information to that as well. Um, this is what we, one of the projects that's actually helping us a lot in understanding how linked open data can help us as an archive, but help us also with European pro problems. One of them being multilingualism. There's a lot of multilingualism that is, um, because we all speak different language in Europe, so adding linked open data keywords as with the uh, translations would help. Also, what you see here on the left, this is the North train station in Brussels. Like it used to be, it was broken down, unfortunately, and built up in the station you know now, we have images of this. And if we have images of this, to find that in the current, like Google Street View, might be difficult, so how to deal with that. And also during the war is, a lot of streets were called the Adolf Hitler Straße, um, <laughs> a street we had to replace those after the war, of course, as well. So how do you feel, if you have images of that, how do you know which street that was during that, that time? Link to Open Data has solutions that can help us with all this. 
And one thing that we're doing, and, and we're still trying to figure out on how to launch this better, um, the best way possible is to, we, we, this is our future version, our future vision is what we call Studio Cinematech, is where we want to become this um, a studio for collaboration on innovation on these films and for allowing other people to access our content, to access our data, but to help us in, in making better stuff for the people to discover these films, but also for our researchers, for our uh, digitize, uh, digitization uh, um, uh, people inside. I'm going to close it down now, don't worry. <laughs> and we're working together also with other organizations and do the same, like back for instance, and we, we're trying to figure out how to place ourselves within that entire thing. So if you ever have ideas, you're very much welcome, you know where to find us. I'm the first one, Brown's the second one. Um, I'm sorry, um, yeah. <laughs> I was talking about the picture, not uh, the <laughs> But anyway, um, so if you have our ideas, uh, we'll come back to you, so keep an eye on us. We're, uh, we're trying to build this archive for all of you, and we hope you can give us some input as well. Thank you very much, Adira. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions? Maybe some small questions, otherwise you can always mail us. Yeah. Uh, when you want to add a keyword to a movie, but keyword doesn't exist in Wikidata, for example, do you add it to Wikidata? Or do you we internally do. In this European project, this was a huge thing where we're still discussing. I want to add it to Wikidata and not as a free text, because I hate free text. If there's anything I really hate, it's free text metadata. Um, but we're working with your, uh, universities and, and researchers, and linked data is still something that's very new to them. So they, they love free text. <laughs> this is a, <laughs> it's a competition between, uh, between two different visions. Uh, but for us, internally, yes. If we add adding new keywords, we already have 22,000. So I don't know how much more we can add. But we will definitely do that first to Wikidata and then to our uh, Yeah. So in that collaboration project, how do you actually work together to, to manage uh, these, these ontologies uh, in a collaborative way, uh, have you used I need a statistic. Kind of yes. um, that's really complicated. Is, it, um, is that a bespoke solution that you need to build, or could yeah. you there to uh, use uh, um, existing uh, software? Yeah, we, this is bespoke. This is uh, something that we're building within this platform where you can research the data in, in uh, we're adding linked open data services to that and then for instance the data that's there can help enrich the, the film and the, the metadata that you want to add. It's a really much more complicated answer than I can give you now and I don't think we have enough time but I, I would gladly uh, uh, explain that more thoroughly uh, over mail or something like that. So, but this is something that very much that we're building this entire platform for. I'm sorry to have yeah. to be a bad guy because we have to. <laughs> we're already in 10 minutes uh, almost. So.